Taiwan. In this video, we're going to talk about the history and strategic importance of Taiwan, but we need to differentiate two realities, the island and the country. I will start and mostly focus on the island and then on the country a little when the two stories coincide as we close in on modern times. A thank you to the Taipei Economic and Cultural Center in Portugal, which aided with the research for this video. The island of Taiwan dates back tens of thousands of years, when the ancient Taiwanese indigenous people settled there, in around 3000 BC, that is over 5000 years ago. Not much is known about these people and their initial times, but they remain on the island until today, despite only making up around 3% of the current population, but still numbering around 570,000 people. And it's interesting because their origin is not only Asian, but also Austronesian. In fact, it is the opinion of many that Taiwan is the origin point of the Austronesian expansion through the Pacific Ocean whose descendant groups today include ethnic groups in the Philippines, Micronesia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, East Timor, Madagascar, and Polynesia. Most historical linguists also consider Taiwan to be the original homeland of the Austronesian language family, so we can understand that this island of 36,000 square kilometers holds great importance from a very early stage in human history. History. Its location is key. It is off the coast of China, reasonably near Japan, Korea, the Philippines, and the Pacific Ocean. But as the island grew in importance, other peoples from surrounding areas began migrating there, from the Philippines as well as from China. Early Chinese histories refer to visits to the eastern islands that some historians identify with Taiwan. Troops of the Three Kingdoms, especially from the state of Wu, are recorded as visiting an island known as Yizhu in the 3rd century. The Book of Sui, an official history book of the Sui dynasty from China, states that Emperor Yang sent three expeditions to a place called Ryukyu early in the 7th century, whose characters are read in Japanese as Ryukyu. Today the Ryukyu are an archipelago of smaller islands north of Taiwan, but it is believed at this time Taiwan was included in the name. And in 1544, the island gained its first European name, Formosa. As Portuguese sailors passed by it on their way to Japan, they wrote down on the ship's log that they named the island Formosa, meaning beautiful. The small surrounding archipelago of Pescadores was also named by the Portuguese meaning fishermen. It is also known as Pengu. By the 16th century, increasing numbers of Chinese fishermen, traders, and even pirates were visiting the southwestern part of the island. And in fact, when the Dutch arrived in 1623, they described encountering about 1,500 Chinese people. The Dutch were eager to build their colonial empire at this time, and after being defeated by the Portuguese in Macau, they needed a place to build a trade and military base in Asia. They decided to build it in what is now the city of Tainan, on the southwest coast. Local aboriginals called the area Pakan, and on some old maps the island of Taiwan is named Pakan, continuing to demonstrate the various names the island has had throughout history, and also the importance it always had, being viewed as a key strategic center for East Asia. The Spanish viewed this base as a threat to their domain over the Philippines, and so they also established a fort on the northeast coast in what is now Kilung, and another Fort Santo Domingo in what is now Tamsui. But Spanish presence did not last long, and they ended up leaving. Without competition, the Dutch set out to turn Taiwan into a Dutch colony, subduing many local tribes. The Dutch East India Trading Company administered the island and its predominantly Aboriginal population until 1662, setting up a tax system, schools to teach Roman romanized script of the aboriginal languages and attempting to convert locals to Christianity. And these Dutch systems were often adopted by succeeding occupiers. With the rise of the Qing dynasty in the early 17th century, the Dutch East India Company cut their ties with the existing Ming dynasty and allied with the Qing instead, in exchange for the right to access their trade and shipping routes. But their gamble didn't pay off. In 1662, Fort Zeelandia was sieged by Koxinga, a Ming dynasty loyalist who, after defeating them dismantled the Dutch colony, expelled them from the island, and established the kingdom of Tungning, loyal to the Chinese Ming. Interesting to see that this early on, the island was already the subject of dispute between two opposing sides attempting to rule China, a forecast of what was to happen in the future. 
The Ming Dynasty may have triumphed in Taiwan against the Dutch, but they were defeated in mainland China against the Qing. However, this defeat somewhat led to the growth of Taiwan, as many Chinese people wanting to escape Qing rule migrated to the island, increasing its population in number. But the kingdom of Tungning wasn't strong enough to maintain itself, and also had to deal with many internal struggles for power. In 1683, the grandson of Koxinga surrendered to the Qing dynasty, and the island was annexed by the Chinese in 1683. But oddly, at this point, it seemed the Chinese did not want to rule the island. Their only purpose in the war against Tungning was to defeat the ruling dynasty, which was loyal to their former enemies, the Ming dynasty. The emperor at the time is said to have declared that Taiwan is the size of a pellet. Taking it is no gain, not taking it is no loss. And his ministers advised him to relocate all of the Chinese population back to the mainland and abandon the island. Meanwhile, others, including a sea admiral, Xi Lang, tried to convince the emperor not to abandon Taiwan due to its strategic importance, especially from a naval point of view. In the end, a compromise seems to have been reached. The island remained under the control of the Chinese Empire, but most of the Chinese people left. By 1682, there were only 7,000 Chinese left on Taiwan as they had married with native women and had property on the island. From 1683 to around 1760, the Qing government also limited immigration to Taiwan, but after the end of this policy, the number of Chinese people grew a lot, and by 1811, there were more than 2 million Chinese Chinese immigrants on Taiwan. In 1875, the Taipei Prefecture was established under the jurisdiction of the Fujian province. Given the strategic and commercial value of Taiwan, there were British suggestions in 1840 and 1841 to seize the island, which again demonstrated the large importance of the island. And during the Sino-French War, the French also attempted an invasion of Taiwan in 1884. Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch, French and British. All the main European colonizing powers attempted with more or less dedication to establish a colony in this key Asian island. After these attempted takeovers by Europe, which the Chinese were able to fend off, came the Japanese threat, which also began seeking to expand their rule outside their native land. The issue first began over the Ryukyu Islands, the small archipelago north of Taiwan. The Japanese claimed ownership over them, and while China initially contested it, they eventually accepted Japanese rule, although making it clear that Taiwan was not to be included in this recognition. The Japanese, nevertheless, launched an expedition to Mutan village with a force of 36 600 soldiers in 1874, then eventually retreating after the Qing dynasty paid them. And this incident caused the Chinese to rethink the importance of Taiwan in their maritime defense strategy. At this point, about 45% of the island was administered under direct Qing rule, while the remaining was lightly populated by natives. The population was of around 2.5 million, 2.3 being Han Chinese, and the remaining 200,000 from indigenous tribes. Right after, in 1894, the first Sino-Japanese war broke out over disputes over the control of another region, Korea. The Japanese had victory after victory throughout six months, and so, in 1895, the Qing sued for peace, with Taiwan being given to Japan as a part of the peace deal through the Treaty of Shimonoseki. From this point, for about half a century, Taiwan was under Japanese rule, being known to them as Takazago Koku, another of the many names of the island. The change of possession of Taiwan from China to Japan saw the shifting of Asian dominance, from one to the other. Now, obviously, this wasn't the only reason of it, and the ownership of the island was a consequence of it, but it reinforced it as well, again demonstrating the strategic importance of Taiwan, both from an economic and also a military point of view. The transfer of Taiwan from Imperial China to Imperial Japan resulted of a peace deal in 1895, but this peace didn't last long. Soon after, in 1937, another conflict began between the two nations, with China now being a republic after the Qinghai Revolution of 1911, which put an end to the Qing Dynasty and the Chinese Empire. The conflict with Japan would eventually be incorporated into a much larger one, World War II. This led to a quick and heavy industrialization of the island by Japan to fill their military needs, and by 19 1939, industrial production had exceeded agricultural production in Taiwan. At the same time, the Kominka in Imperialization Project was put underway to instill the Japanese spirit in Taiwanese residents. Throughout the war, from 1937 to 45, over 205,000 Taiwan residents were drafted into the military of the Japanese Empire. 15% of them died. 
the Imperial Japanese Navy also operated heavily out of Taiwan, again demonstrating its strategic importance, with the entering of the US in the war became one of the objectives of the Chinese Republic. In fact, in the Cairo Declaration of 1943, the Allied powers declared the return of Taiwan to the Republic of China as one of several Allied demands. And with Japanese defeat in 1945, this happened. On October 25th of 1945, the Republic of China proclaimed Taiwan Retrocession Day, the day Japanese troops surrendered and returned to ROC sovereignty. At that moment, around 300,000 Japanese lived on the island in addition to the Chinese and the natives. But throughout the following year, China repatriated almost all of them back to Japan. Soon after, the Chinese internal conflict on the mainland set the ruling Republic of China regime against Mao Zedong's forces. The latter took control of the mainland and the ROC regime moved to Taiwan. In 1945, along with the government and the remnants of the army, about 2 million people moved from the mainland to Taiwan. Today, the Republic of China, more commonly known as Taiwan, remains on the island. Its regime has evolved from the initial uniformity to diversity, as they are today. A government that describes its core values as freedom and democracy with free and fair elections. An interesting example of an old regime that was able to reform itself. And thousands of years later, the strategic value of the island continues to be immense. It has 23.4 million people, around 95% are of Han Chinese origin, with the remaining being indigenous. However, out of 95% Han Chinese, these differ among themselves between both the areas of mainland China they come from and the time when they arrived in Taiwan. 70% are Oklo, 14% Aka, and another 14% Waishengren. Their official language is Taiwanese Mandarin, but they also recognize as a national language Formosan, which is a set of indigenous languages, all of which are Austronesian and also other local dialects. It's interesting, as we can see on this map, that the eastern part of the island continues to speak a lot of the indigenous languages, with some areas reaching high percentages, a situation that reflects the inability of the Dutch, Japanese, and Chinese at first too, of stretching their rule to the eastern part of the island, where the indigenous tribes held more power. Even population density maps today show us the western part of the island is the most populated. 35% of the people follow Buddhism as a religion, 33% Taoism, 18.7% are agnostic, 4% Christian, and 9% follow other faiths. Their currency is the new Taiwan dollar, and considering purchasing power parity, they have a GDP of 1.4 trillion US dollars, the 19th largest economy in the world. They were important economically since the start and had periods of strong growth during the various occupations, namely during the Qing takeover or the war economy the Japanese used it for. Its capital city is Taipei. So, that is a brief history of the island of Taiwan, its origins and native people, the key importance it had initially in the Austronesian language and culture, as well as its expansion throughout the Pacific, the arrival of the Chinese, but also of the European powers, who seek to colonize it and take advantage of its strategic position for the conquest of Eastern Asia, how it came under the control of Imperial China, then Imperial Japan, and then being returned to the Republic of China, evolving through great changes into what it is today, an island of great strategic importance socially, linguistically, economically, and militarily as well. Thanks so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you want. Leave a comment below with your opinions and thoughts. Are there any other interesting facts or pieces of information about Taiwan and its history? Let me know. I will see you next time for more general knowledge.